says that they're looking for a shelter Got a lot to get but I don't know how to help her I should just let it go Till they learn how to grow And how to liberate Everybody says that she's looking for a shelter Got a lot to give but I don't know how I felt her They should just let it go Till these cities learn to grow And how to liberate Silence is easy It just becomes me Don't even know me You all lie about me Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Silence is Easy by Star Sailor, written and performed often by James Walsh. Fantastic singer-songwriter. Seems to be uh, working the London scene again now. I saw him a few weeks ago doing an acoustic set. He played this song. Sounded terrific. Great voice as well. So there's some really interesting things going on in this tune. It's basically only got two chords. So what I wanted to talk about today was a little bit about how you could approach that and the different thing, ways you could look at playing it yourself and how you could play it with your friends and playing it along with the record and all that sort of uh, thing. So, so let's look first of all at the easiest way of playing this tune. And it is quite simply two bars of E and two bars of A. And probably the simplest, of the easiest, peasiest version you could possibly come up with is strumming once a bar and then, so you'll strum twice on each chord and then just change it between that open E chord and the open A. So E. Everybody says that they're looking for a shelter. A a lot to give, but I A know how to help her. E should just let it go. E until they learn to grow. A how to liberate. Silence is easy. Now, this is really, really simple. And if you were playing this at a party for a sing-along, people would struggle a bit. But at this level, you'd be able to play it along with the record. You've got plenty of time to change between the chords, and jamming along with the record is cool fun. So it's definitely something that you should consider. Um, and one other cool little trick that I'll give you there for free that's a nice, easy one, is instead of playing a whole A chord, if you lift off your third finger, so you're just playing the middle two strings at the second fret. So you don't play the thicker string for an A chord, then open A, the fifth string, second fret, second fret, open, open. This chord is called A sus two, is its proper big full name. And it sounds really nice to go from the E, talk about the strumming more in a second, then to the A sus two. You could use any fingers. Use first and second, second and third, third and fourth. It doesn't really matter. If you're doing my beginner's course, you'd probably use first finger on the third string and second finger on the fourth string because it's most like the A chord, third finger lifted off. But it really is up to you which fingers you want to use because they all pretty much sound the same, right? So um, starting off with that real simple, just the, the simplest one strum per bar would be the first option. But really, if you're playing it by yourself, you need a little bit more groove than that. And the, the next easiest one up is just to play four down strums to the bar. Okay, it still sounds a little bit kind of beginnery, but just going like... <laughs> Got a lot to give, but I don't know how to help her. I should just let it go till they learn how to grow and how to liberate. Silence is easy. Now, if you're learning to sing as well, that can be quite nice just to have that really, really easy rhythm there going on. It's very consistent, training you up to move your hand consistently, which is also very important for beginner guitar players. If you want to take it up another step, Okay, all I'm doing now is I'm playing eight down strums to the bar and I'm putting the strum that falls on beat two and four a little bit louder. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So all of the strums are just playing the thicker strings. Okay, thickest couple, not just one string, a few strings. And then on beats two and four, I'm pushing through to strum all the strings. So one, two, three, four. question I know I'm going to get on the A chord 
Mm. What happens if you hit the thicker string? Well, really, if you're a complete beginner, just don't worry about it. If you accidentally hit it, it doesn't sound bad at all, really, to be honest. It's not ideal. So the things that you could do is try and pick just from the fifth string, which you should be trying to do anyway. I use my thumb to reach over the top of the neck, but for beginners, I recommend that you try and keep your thumb around the back of the neck because you want to strengthen that muscle there between your first finger and your thumb for when you learn bar chords in the near future, okay? So that's why I try and encourage beginners to keep the thumb around the back of the neck there. Um, but yeah, as a, a more advanced player, you might bring your thumb around just to touch the thicker string there so you don't hear that one as well. So um, you've got three options there for strumming now. You've got just one strum per bar, You've got four down strums per bar and eight down strums per bar. Okay, it's quite a few different options. That goes from being like the simplest version ever to actually what James plays when he plays it live. So that's, you know, something to consider anyway. Um, that you've got all of that spectrum and pretty much anything in between. If you really like playing Old Faithful, like down, down, up, up, down, you could use that. I particularly like that particular strumming pattern uh, for that song. It feels a little bit wrong, but you know, it works and you could actually, it's a good song, this sort of, it's so simple that you would be able to explore different strumming patterns that you're learning or exploring finger style or whatever you like, you could try applying it to, to this song. And I think that would be a cool, uh, cool adventure for you. But um, what I also wanted to show you, I was just being silly at the beginning and I, I played the first bit with a capo and then threw it off, but it also works great. Um, to practice other chords. So putting the capo on at the uh, seventh fret um, and then playing A chord to D chord. It's actually the same. So when you play an A chord with the capo at seventh fret, it sounds the same as E open. And D chord at the seventh fret sounds the same as A open. So you can have exactly the same. Sounds really, really good. You can definitely use the sus chords here as well. So using the A sus shape. So nothing on the thicker string. Open, second fret, second fret, open, open. Talking relative to the capo, of course. If I say second fret, I mean two higher than the capo. Uh, and then to the uh, D chord, you just lift off your second finger from the D chord. So you've got nothing on the thickest two strings, but if you accidentally hit the fifth string, it doesn't really matter. Uh, open, second, third, open. It would be D sus two. Okay, and that again sounds great. To A sus2. To D sus2. Okay, really, really nice sound, these sus chords. And it's interesting that you can use these different grips. A third option, if you want to get really clever, would be to put the capo down to the second fret and use a D chord, which is your first chord, and then a G chord. Because that's again, that sounds the same as E chord. And A. See, I can, you know, you definitely wouldn't want to be doing this capo silliness in a song. I just wanted you to hear that the, the tonality is staying the same. It's not changing key when you do that. And a really cool thing to do, if you've got somebody that you're jamming with, is for one person to play the chords in one part of the neck and another person to play the chords in another part of the neck using the capo. So guitar one playing E and A chord and guitar two with a capo at the seventh fret playing A and D chord. It sounds wicked. Sounds so full and so amazing if you can get into doing that, you know. Maybe doing different rhythms as well. Make sure you're staying in, in time with each other. Either put a metronome on or really listen to each other. Uh, but, you know, one guy's maybe just doing the single strum on, on beat one of every bar and the other guy's doing the eighth notes, you know, you can really experiment. Maybe one guy's doing finger style, the other one's strumming. There's lots of cool things that you can explore like that, which as a beginner guitar player, if you've got access to, access to somebody else who can play guitar, then it's a really, really fun thing to explore. And, and it makes learning these tunes that are simple kind of really exciting. You can play along with the record. Load. We looked at three different ways of playing.
playing the chords and three different looks at the rhythm. So there's lots of different combinations to explore with this kind of a tune, you know. So that's what I would be recommending. So do remember, I've got more than a thousand lessons now for free over on my site. All of the beginner's songs are all structured by difficulty, so it makes it really easy to find ones that are at your level. So do go and check that out over on the website. And do please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate your support. So I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.